a minute or two more to get logged in, just in case we have some late arrivals, and then we will get started. So please hang tight, and we'll get started in just a minute. All right, well, while we wait for anybody else to join us, just a little housekeeping. There is a box down in the bottom left-hand corner that is your chat box. Feel free to send me questions that you may have as we go through the presentation. I'm going to try to leave time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. So, all right, well, let's get started. So, welcome to Scandinavia in 2018. My name is Amanda Hancock, and I'm happy to be introducing you to Scandinavia and Brecky Tours, in case you're unfamiliar with us. So um, I have my contact information there on the screen. Feel free to reach out and um, email me or call me if you have any questions after the presentation. We are recording, so everybody's going to receive a copy afterward in case you um, want to go back and review it for anything you might have missed. Now, just in case you are new to Brecky Tours, I wanted to give you a brief introduction into who we are. We were founded in 1956 when Arne Brecky, a student from Norway, worked his way through graduate school in America by conducting summer tours in Europe. We're a family-owned company located in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and we offer a wide variety of products and services such as our own escorted tours, independent travel packages, customized tours for group individuals, families and groups, heritage travel, and cruises. Now, at Brecky Tours, we have one goal in mind, and that is to strengthen the cultural and ethnic ties between North America and Scandinavia by creating meaningful travel experiences. So why visit Scandinavia? Why should your clients want to travel to this cold, you know, northern destination? Well, there's many reasons, so I've summed up a few here. First is just the natural beauty and phenomena that you find in Scandinavia. You'll find glaciers, fjords, mountains, forests. Uh, during the summer months, you'll see the midnight sun, which is almost 24 hours of daylight the northern lights during the winter months. You can find all of these and more in Scandinavia. Scandinavia also has a really rich history filled with Vikings, kings and queens, wars, great wealth, hardships, and so much more. Now the culture of Scandinavian countries are uniquely distinct and yet at the same time they can be quite similar. Nature, family, education, and hard work are all highly valued by the folks living in Scandinavia. So it's really interesting to see how their culture differs from, from ours here in the U.S. Uh, another good reason, they speak English. Most of Scandinavians speak very good English, making it an easy place to get around on your own. And speaking of which, the public transportation in Scandinavia is very good. There's buses, trains, low-cost flights, uh, and car rentals to choose from, so it's, it's an easy place to get from point A to point B. And the food, that's a really great reason to travel, um, to experience new um, taste and dishes. And so in Scandinavia, you'll, you'll find fresh seafood, freshly baked bread, fresh fruit. I'm not sure if you noticed the theme there, but um, there's a lot of um, fresh locally sourced items that they use um, in their everyday dishes. And finally, Scandinavia is a relatively safe destination. In fact, you'll see babies sleeping in their strollers outside of shops and restaurants. So that's something that people um, find really appealing when they're looking for some place to travel. So why book with Brecky Tours? Well, uh, just to give you a quick synopsis, let we would like you to put our experience to work for you. So we are a full service Scandinavian specialist and we have over 60 years of experience in travel within Scandinavia. So that's a lot of experience that you can put to work for you. 
We offer unique destinations that you won't find with other tour operators. And all of our escorted tours can be tailored to your client's travel interests, or we can create a completely customized travel itinerary just for them. And that's something that you're not going to find um, with other tour operators, is the ability to customize travel plans um, specifically for your clients. You will earn 10% commission on the land-only price for all of our escorted tours, extensions, and independent travel. And for customized travel arrangements, we can provide net pricing in which you can turn um, and mark that up to for your commission. Now, if you have a group that you would like to take to Scandinavia, we offer attractive group leader discounts and complimentary la land arrangements for groups over 15 passengers. So if you have a group of friends or um, clients that have traveled with you before and you want to take them to Scandinavia, then we would work with you to either get you a really great discount or um, provide a complimentary land and sometimes even air arrangements just for you. Just to give you an overview of our escorted tours, because that is our main business here at Becky Tours, um, all of our escorted tours are designed to feature breathtaking beauty of Scandinavia, in addition to cultural insights, uh, meeting local families, and discovering the aspects of their daily lives. So we, we don't want people just to see Scandinavia, we want them to experience Scandinavia. And with this in mind, your clients will receive the following on all of our escorted tours, which hopefully will enhance their journey. First off is a good value for your travel budget. Um, Scandinavia can be expensive, but by taking advantage of group discounts, many clients feel that they receive more than what they paid for. Now, all of the activities, museum visits, and soft adventures, such as a family rafting adventure, are all included in the tour price. So we don't like to nickel and dime our clients, um, and hopefully that's something that you will appreciate. We, we don't like doing the paying locally for add-on, that sort of thing. Everything is included up front so that your clients won't have to worry about um, carrying a lot of cash with them while they're on tour. We also offer luggage handling at most hotels, and our tour director will meet the group at the arriving airport and stay with the group until they depart the tour. Most meals are also included in the itinerary. We also try to include special meals such as dinner at a local farm or at a unique location. All of our tours are on first-class touring coaches. They have large windows, reclining seats, footrests, and even bathrooms on board. So your clients can sit back and relax while our wonderful bus drivers, and they really are very good, uh, chauffeur them around in style. And finally, all of our tours can be customized um, with pre and post ex tour extensions within Scandinavia and then beyond. So with the exception of our Land of the Midnight Sun tour, which I'll discuss in a little bit, all of our tours do include visits to Bergen and Oslo um, within um, Norway, as well as a journey through the fjord country, which is one of the main attractions um, within Scandinavia. In addition, you'll also, your clients will also get to see a state church, uh, which is one of the iconic symbols of Norway. And another activity that we include on all of our tours, again, except for the Min Land of the Midnight Sun, is a ride on the famous Flum Railway. Is ranked as one of the top 20 train rides in Europe, and we really feel that it's something that all visitors to Norway should experience. So if you're looking for a tour um, in a particular time period for your clients, then I've put together this list that kind of breaks down our tour departures for 2018. We have 10 different tour itineraries and some with multiple departures. And as you can see, the most popular times to travel are during June and July. We also have um, a departure in August and early September for those maybe wanting to travel outside of the typical uh, time period. So who will your clients be traveling with when they're on a Brecky escorted tour? So they'll meet a variety of people, but in general, these folks are from the US and Canada. They'll have ethnic ties to Scandinavia. They're usually retired, and they enjoy learning new things and seeking out new experiences. Some of the other interests commonly found among our tour participants include um, they enjoy history, embroidery, folk music, dancing and singing, hiking, and other outdoor activities. So it's it's you know it's a wide mix of people, but just in general, um, this is who you will meet while on one of our escorted tours. 
And speaking of our escorted tours, um, your tour guides. So our tour director will typically meet the group at the arriving airport within Scandinavia and stay with them until the group departs. Our tour directors hail from the US as well as Scandinavia, but English is the language that we use while on tour. So we do try to throw in a little bit of um, maybe some Norwegian and Swedish and things like that, um, just so those that are inclined can learn a few new words or phrases, but everything is in English. And we also have local guides that will join the group for short periods of time. And they're there really just to provide specific information about a place that they're visiting, um, a museum, historical site. They're only with the group for a few hours and then they depart. But the tour director will stay with the group throughout. And this is one of our tour directors here. Her name is Jean. She's a very sweet lady. And I wanted to also give you a just kind of a glimpse at the day in the life of one of our escorter tours so that you will know what your clients can expect when traveling with us. So they'll start out with a breakfast buffet at the hotel and definitely don't want to miss that. Um, I put a couple of pictures in here so you can see just what they'll get to sample. Um, a variety of breads, fruits, cheeses, meats, um, eggs. Just a, It puts our continental breakfast here in the U.S. to shame. So after that, um, we'll have the departure from the hotel, usually between 8.30 and 9. We'll have several stops throughout the day for food, um, bathroom breaks, activities, um, shopping, that sort of thing. On board the bus, the tour director will keep the group entertained with information about what they're going to be seeing um, up next and where they're traveling through. Uh, that sometimes we sing songs on the bus, we'll have language lessons and more. And then sometimes the, the tour director just um, quiets down, lets the group you know, relax on board the bus. So there's a little bit of downtime in between too. Usually the group will arrive at the hotel in the evening and we try to leave a little bit of time for people if they want to take a walk, um, relax, maybe freshen up before they have dinner. And you can even do a little bit of swimming if, um, if you're so inclined. So before the tour director lets the group go their separate ways in the evening, he or she will advise of the departure time for the next day. So, so that way everybody is ready to go that next morning on board the bus. And now that you know a little bit more about Brecky Tours and who your clients will be traveling with, I want to take you on a quick virtual tour of Scandinavia on some of our 2018 escorted tours so that you, you can actually see what your clients will experience when traveling with us. So we'll start with Spectacular Norway. Now we have three departures in 2018 and this is a 10 day tour which is a great introductory tour for Norway and it features visits to Oslo, Vos, we have an excursion to Bergen, and then we'll travel north up to Loen, Molda, and then finally Trondheim, where the tour will end. So after an international flight to Oslo, the group will arrive in Norway on day two, and then the tour director will meet the group at the airport and escort everyone to the Grand Hotel in Oslo. The rest of the day is free, and we'll have a welcome dinner that night at the hotel. So really the tour actually kicks off on day three with a sightseeing tour of the Viking Ship Museum and the Vigeland Sculpture Park. Now in case you're not really familiar with these two, two, um, two sites, Vigeland Park is the world's largest sculpture park made by a single artist and it's really a highlight of Oslo. And the Viking Ship Museum is home to the world's best preserved Viking ships and finds from Viking tombs around the Oslo Fjord. It has three Viking ships, and you'll also find a number of small boats, sledges, a really ornate and detailed cart, tools, textiles, and household utensils. So then we'll uh, continue the tour to the Norwegian Folk Museum, and it's one of the world's oldest and largest open-air museums. There's 155 traditional houses from all parts of Norway and a stave church from the year 1200. The museum also has indoor exhibits of traditional handicraft items such as folk costumes, or otherwise known as bunad in Norway. Sami culture, which um, if you're familiar with Norway and Sweden and Finland, up north is the area called Lapland, and that is where the Sami um, people 
tend to um, come from. Um, you'll also find weapons, toys, pharma pharmaceutical history, and changing exhibitions at the Norwegian Folk Museum. In the summer, the Open Air Museum offers freshly baked lefse, horse and carriage rides, you can feed the animals, and you'll have um, handicraft demonstrations and more, such as this, this young man here, he's playing the hardanger fiddle. So um, it's a nice little way to get a little cultural insight into Norway. So the rest of the day is free, and so we recommend people to, um, to kind of go out and explore on their own. They might want to visit the um, Oslo Parliament Building, which is a picture here, or the Oslo City Hall, which inside you can walk around and there's quite a, a lot of different artwork that people can look at, and Akershus Castle. Now the castle dates from 1299 and it's a medieval um, castle and royal residence that was built into a fortress in 1592. And um, it serves, um, it has several magnificent halls and a church, a royal mausoleum, and inside you'll find models of the castle, the governor, government's reception rooms and banquet halls. So you may also want to visit um, the nearby resistance museum which documents Norway's domestic World War II history from the years 1940 to 1945. So during that time, Germany occupied Norway. And so um, this museum has um, from that time pictures, documents, posters, um, models, um, newspaper clippings, and that sort of thing to, to show how the people of Norway reacted to that um, occupation. So on day four, we'll drive across the Hardanger Vita, which is the largest mountain plateau in northern Norway. And as you can see, it's quite barren, but it is uh, very beautiful. So it just has a different kind of beauty than what uh, most people think of in Norway. In Eidfjord, we'll visit the Hardanger Fjord Nature Center. And the main objective of the center is to gather and impart knowledge about the way different parts of nature interact and highlight the relations between nature and human endeavors. So you'll have um, some animals in here, uh, wildlife, maybe some goats milling around. So it's kind of a fun little visit. Um, people can see um, what animals live in this area. We'll continue on to Vos for dinner and overnight at the lovely Fleischer's Hotel. And this is really a beautiful hotel. Um, it has an interesting past. It was built in 1889 in the popular Swiss style. And the hotel quickly became known amongst wealthy tourists due to its architectural style. During the Second World War, the Fleischer's Hotel was actually occupied by the Germans, and the hotel was among the few buildings in Vos that was not destroyed by bombs. So it actually survived World War II, and it's, it's a lovely property. Now on the next day, we'll take an excursion to Bergen, which is Norway's second largest city. Here we'll have a sightseeing tour featuring a visit to Trolltagen, which is the home of Edvard Grieg, a famous Norwegian composer, and the Hanseatic Wharf. So we're going to visit the Hanseatic Wharf here. Um, it's the, it was once the main hub for trade between Norway and the continent, going back nearly a thousand years. And so there's a lot of old wooden buildings here that we'll get to, to tour and um, look through and maybe do a little bit of shopping while we're there. So if um, you can also, the, our tour participants can also have um, some time to check out the fish market, which is quite, um, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of colors, a lot of smells, a lot of different things uh, to take in. And if they want, they could ride the funicular up to the top of Mount Ployan for a fantastic view of Bergen from on high. We'll return to Vos for overnight again at the Fleischer's Hotel. Now the next day we're going to start with a train trip on the Flum Railway. So the train journey runs through fantastic nature, steep mountains, breathtaking waterfalls, through 20 tunnels, and offers so many viewpoints that many feel like traveling multiple times between the mountains and the fjord. So we'll start up high in uh, Myrdal and we'll descend 2,800 feet within 13 miles to sea level um, in Flum. And then from Flum, we'll drive through the world's second longest tunnel. It was the, the longest tunnel, but somebody built a longer one, and now it's the second. Um, to Ireland, we'll 
this tunnel is very unique in that it's um, it has caverns with lights on the inside that help break up the 20-minute monotonous drive. So um, it's it's there's a lot of attention that was paid to the lighting, and the mountain caves are equipped with blue and yellow light, which give the illusion of driving into daylight every six kilometers or so. Um, so that way you, you're not feeling so claustrophobic and it kind of keeps you awake as you're driving through the tunnel. From Ireland, we'll actually cross the Sonne Fjord by ferry. So we'll hop on board the little boat and we'll continue along the fjord to Fjordland, where we'll visit the Norwegian Glacier Museum and get answers to questions like, why is this glacier ice blue? Why is the fjord green? And how are fjords formed? So there's a lot of information contained inside this museum. You can even do your own experiments with 1,000-year-old ice from a nearby glacier. Speaking of which, we'll stop for a photo shoot at the Boyum Glacier, which is um, on our way to Lowen, where we'll spend the night at the Alexandra Hotel. Now the next day, we're going to start off with a cruise on the magnificent Geiringer Fjord. Now, Geiringer Fjord and Sognay Fjord are probably the two most popular fjords in Norway, and you'll get to do both on this tour, or your clients will get to do both on this tour, I guess I should say. And then we're going to drive the famous troll path. As you can see, it's a very windy, twisty road, and we'll do that en route to Molda, which is the city of roses. Um, this name originated during Molda's era as a tourist destination of international fame in the late 19th century. And tonight, we're, uh, the group will stay at the cell-shaped Scandic Sleet Hotel, and you'll have a view of the water. So here's the hotel. It looks like a um, the sail of a boat. It has a really nice bar up on the top floor, too, that you can get a really wonderful view. So we're going to hit the road again the next morning. This time, we're going to drive the Atlantic Ocean Road. And this unique stretch of road takes you right out to the ocean's edge. And in 2005, the road was voted, voted Norway's engineering feat of the century, and it's also known as the world's most beautiful drive. So if you've seen some pictures of this in car commercials and things like that, this is where this area, this area is where they shoot all those wonderful commercials. So the tour will conclude in Trondheim, which was the Viking capital of Norway, until 1217. On the last day in Norway, the group will enjoy a tour of Trondheim featuring the Nidaros Cathedral. Now, the Nidaros Cathedral is built over the burial site of St. Olaf, which is the Norwegian Viking king who became the patron saint of Norway. Today, it's the northernmost medieval cathedral in the world and the second largest in Scandinavia. So just to sum up some highlights of Spectacular Norway, we're going to visit the Norwegian Folk Museum in Oslo. We're going to ride the Flom Railway, visit a glacier museum in Fairland. We're going to cruise the Geiringer Fjord, drive the Golden Route and the Atlantic Ocean Road. We're going to have a sightseeing tour of Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim, and then so much more. So the pricing for this tour is $42.95, which includes airfare from Minneapolis-St. Paul. Now, all of our tours do include airfare on Iceland Air from Minneapolis. However, if your clients are coming from somewhere, um, say, Denver or Seattle or somewhere along the East Coast, that is something that we can work with you on, that we could either have the land-only price and they you know, book their air separately, or we could um, do a an air deviation kind of thing so so that's something that we are more than happy to work with you on so all right next is norway's family adventure now we designed this tour with um the the idea of having parents and grandparents introducing their children and grandchildren to norway and their norwegian heritage so this is a really unique tour in that our tour guide, um, Kari, will also be bringing her family along, including her three children and her husband, for the ride. So, um, so this tour is going to start in Oslo over here. And we're going to travel north up to Oyer, to Gul, Flum again, and over, where, um, over to Bergen where the tour will end. 
So there's Kari here and her three lovely children and then um, her husband as well. So Kari will meet the group in um, Oslo and then they're going to transfer the ho to the hotel for overnight. Again on day three, that's kind of when everything kicks off. We're going to take a tour of Vigeland Sculpture Park once again. But this time we're going to throw in Holman Colin Ski Jump. So we figured the kids would probably enjoy that. And then the rest of the day is free for everybody to just explore on their own. The next morning we're going to depart for uh, Lillehammer and we're going to visit the 1994 Winter Olympic sites. And then we're going to head on to Oyer for overnight at the Hunderfulsen Hotel and Resort. Because the next day, which will be July 4th, which is, should be a lot of fun, we're going to have the whole day at Hunderfulsen Family Park. So it's an amusement park. It has miniature um, buildings of Norway. There's a huge troll that guards the entrance. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, our families that went on this tour have really enjoyed it in the past. So we're hoping that um, this year is no different, that everybody will have a great time. Great way to celebrate July the 4th. On day six, we're going to head through the Valdres Valley to Fogerness. And Fogerness is well known for its folk museum there and it has a really extensive connection of bunads, which again is the traditional costume of Norway. So we'll get a chance to, to see some of these um, bunads before we head to the Storfjell Hotel in Gul. Now this hotel is definitely keyed for families. Um, they have a variety of um, hiking and walking that's nearby. They have a putt-putt course, a swimming pool, and even an arcade at the hotel. So might as well just stay at the hotel and have a little time to enjoy some fun with your family. On day seven, we'll depart Ghoul and drive through the Hems uh, drive through Hemsedal for a tour of Borgen State Church. And this is a really um, spectacular church. It's one of the best preserved um, state churches within Norway. And then as we come over to into the fjord country, we're going to drive the snow road to Stegestein. And this will be a great way to introduce the fjord country to the group as we get this. Um, you can walk out on this platform and it just juts out over the fjord and you can get a fantastic view of the, um, the village below as well as the water. We'll then travel down the mountainside to Flum located at the end of the Arlen Fjord, and we'll have an overnight at the Fretheim Hotel. So day eight, we're going to start off with a train ride on the famous Flum Railway. And there's the Arlen Fjord that we'll have a little cruise on later as we go to the little village of Underdal. So Underdal is home to not only Norway's smallest safe church, but also about 80 people and 500 goats. Underdahl is known for its brown goat cheese and we'll learn more about the tradition of cheese making and farming in the mountains from our local guide. And then afterward, we'll sample a bit and enjoy dinner before we return to Flum for overnight. So I don't know if any of you have tried this cheese. It's wonderful, love it. So it's always fun to share, share that um, little tradition of, um, of Norway and farming in the mountains with, um, with kids. So day nine, we're going to start off with a trip to Vos, where we will have a family rafting adventure. So this is a three-hour journey that takes us along the Vosel River to Evanger Lake. And we'll, at the end, we'll have some well-deserved refreshments. So it's a lot of fun for, for everybody. After that, we'll, the group will continue to Bergen and we'll have a night's rest at the Clarion Admiral Hotel, which you can't see it in this picture, but it's kind of over here. It's opposite of the Hanseatic Wharf, so it's right across the water. Speaking of the Hanseatic Wharf, we'll see that the next day on a city um, tour. And then we're going to ride the funicular up to the top of Mount Floyan for a view of Bergen. So, quick overview of family adventure. We are going to travel with the Norwegian family. We're going to spend July 4th at Hunderfulsen Family Park. Should be a lot of fun. We're going to travel to Stegestein Viewpoint so you can get that fantastic view over the fjord as you get your first glimpse of the fjords in Norway. And of course, the family rafting adventure in Vos is always a lot of fun. 
Now the price for this tour is $5.95 per person, and then for children it's a little bit less. So and this does include airfare as well. So, um, so if it's a land only package, um, please contact our office and we'll be glad to get that pricing for you. Now, I mentioned earlier that we have some unique destinations that we include on our tour. And thus far, Spectacular Norway and Norway's Family Adventure, you'll find some of those destinations with other tour operators. But this next tour, Majestic Norway, it goes to areas that a lot of people or a lot of tour operators don't include, um, which is the Telemark and the Hardanger regions of Norway. And if you're going, I don't know where those regions are. Well, Rukon here on the map, um, it's this is an approximation, but anyway, um, this would be in the Telemark area. And then you've got Loftus over here, which is in the Hardanger region. So, so these are areas of Norway that usually aren't included on other um, tours. So, um, so this tour really focuses on the southern portions of Norway. And again, the Hardanger and the Telemark regions. So this is an 11 day tour. And we're going to start off in Oslo. And like I said, go to Rukon. And then we'll travel south and continue along the coast back inland into Luftus, Flum, um, and then finally Bergen. So after two nights in Oslo, we'll depart for Telemark. And this area of Norway is rich in cultural traditions and is home to many writers and artists. And if you have seen the landscape, it's not hard to see why, where they got their inspiration from. One of the first stops that we'll make is at the Hedal Stave Church. And this church was built in 1200 and is a master wood, masterwork of wood. It's the largest of the 28 stave churches in Norway today, and it's actually still in use, so it's quite amazing. So in Rukon, we'll visit the Vimmort power station, which was the center of one of the most important acts of sabotage committed during the Second World War. Um, it's when Norwegian saboteurs prevented the Germans from developing a nuclear bomb from the heavy water that was produced there. So we're going to learn a little bit more about this, um, this time during Norway's history and those brave men that um, sacrificed quite a bit to prevent um, Germany from making that um, uh, nuclear bomb. So, and then Rukon itself is just um, a beautiful little town. It's situated in between two mountains. I don't know if you can see it really well from this picture, but during the winter months, they don't get any light um, from the sun because the sun is continuously hidden behind these mountains. So they have mirrors in the city that direct sunlight down into the city center, which is quite, um, it's a, it's a, I don't want to say technological marvel because they're using mirrors, but um, but it's something unique to this area of Norway. So next we'll visit the capital of southern Norway, um, which is Kristiansund. It um, has long been a favorite summer holiday spot amongst Norwegian, and the sea and the surrounding fjords are great for recreational activities like fishing and sailing. And then on our way to Stavanger, we'll enjoy a traditional meal in a former cheese dairy. Again, this is one of those um, special meals that we try to include on our tours. You'll also find Norwegian-produced handmade um, candles, along with local art and interior goods at this um, restaurant. So it's a fun little stop. And as we continue into the Hardanger region, we'll pay a visit to a rose mulling artist and learn about her craft before we settle into the Ullensvang Hotel for two nights. And rose molly is this um, traditional painting that you'll find across Norway. People used to use it to decorate their houses. Um, now it's used to decorate anything that you can put paint to. Uh, plates, um, trunks, just anything, anything. So um, this artist shop that we visit, she is a master artist, um, lovely artwork. So it's always a nice, visit um, at her shop. And then we're going to um, travel, we're going to depart Hardanger on the newly opened Hardanger Bridge. And this opened in 2013, and it's one of the longest suspension bridges in the world. It's also the longest tunnel to tunnel suspension bridge in the world. So as you can see, there's a tunnel on this side and there's a tunnel on this side. So we'll go from the tunnel to the bridge back into a tunnel. So. Quite unique. 
Then we'll continue on to Vos, where we'll board the Flom Railway, and again we'll um, we'll travel down the, the mountainside to Flom. From here we'll cruise the Ireland and Narrow Fjord, which is um, the narrowest and best known of the many arms of the Solna Fjord, and then we'll meet the bus once again and continue to um, Os, which is just south of Bergen. So this will be our hotel for the next couple of nights. It's the Sol Strand Hotel, and it's right along the Bjorna Fjord, so it's quite a lovely property. The last full day in Norway, we're going to take an excursion into Bergen for a city sightseeing tour, again, of Trolltagen and, and the Hanseatic Wharf. So the afternoon, we'll have a little time to shop, um, visit the fish market, and that sort of thing, before we return to Os for dinner and overnight. So some highlights of Majestic Norway. We're going to visit the Norwegian Industrial Museum in um, Rukan. We'll have four nights at Fjordside Hotels, which is kind of a nice um, feature. We'll have a day excursion in the Hardanger region, and then uh, the Norway in a nutshell experience. The price for this tour is $49.95 per person, and again, um, the parts from Minneapolis. Now, this uh, Captivating Scandinavia is a tour that um, not only includes Norway, but also Denmark and Sweden. So we do offer tours to other destinations outside of Norway as well. So I just wanted to touch on that briefly. Uh, this is one of two of our tours that travel um, to destinations other than um, Norway, the other one being Taste of Sweden and Norway, which just focuses on those two countries. Captivating Scandinavia does travel to all three, though. So we're going to begin in Bergen. Uh, continue across the fjord country into Oslo, then we'll travel by cruise down to Copenhagen. We'll board the bus once more and continue into southern Sweden, uh, over to Gothenburg, and finally in Stockholm where the tour ends. So um, I just wanted to throw a little picture in here. Um, this might be who is greeting you at the airport. Um, usually they'll have a little sign that um, gives you an indication of who to look for and where to go. So um, again, we'll start off in Bergen, and we'll have a city sightseeing tour on day three that um, includes the Hanseatic Wharf and Trolltagen. We'll, of course, ride the Flom Railway, and we'll cruise the Ireland Fjord, and we'll uh, travel to Stegestein for a view over the Ireland Fjord. So you can see it from the water and then from up high. And in Oslo, we'll have a sightseeing tour of Eagle Sculpture Park and the Viking Ship Museum. And this is, um, we'll have another kind of a free day in Oslo before we board the cruise to Copenhagen. The cruise doesn't depart until about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So there's pretty much a full day in Oslo where people can to get out and explore on their own. Um, we, we have outside cabins reserved for our cruise, um, our tour participants, so they'll travel in style. And then the next morning, we're going to arrive in Copenhagen. So after everyone gets off, off, off the ship, we'll tour the city's major sites and learn about Copenhagen's colorful history dating back more than 6,000 years. The first written record regarding Copenhagen dates back to 1043. Now, the reigning monarch, Queen Marguerite, can actually trace her ancestry back to Viking Age, which makes Denmark the world's oldest kingdom. So some of the sites that we'll see are the Little Mermaid and, of course, Mount Halloween. Um, afterward, the day is free, and so um, everybody might want to go down the Stroket, which is the world's longest shopping street. So if, uh, if anybody's into shopping, that would be the street to go. On day nine, we're going to depart Copenhagen and drive to Hillerod for a tour of Fredericksburg Castle. Now, this was built as a royal residence for King Christian IV, and the castle is now a Museum of National History. Um, the new permanent exhibit shows the history of the castle, and the museum includes parts of the castle previously closed to the public. You can see original sculptures and decorations before the fire in 1859. The palace grounds also boast a beautiful Baroque garden that was recreated in 1996 according to the original drawings from 1725. So it's really unique to kind of take that step back into history. 
Uh, especially worth noting are the royal monograms executed in boxwood and the historical flowers and festive cascades. So just a glimpse inside the castle so you can kind of get a feel for what um, your clients will be seeing. We have the audience chamber, um, the chapel, and the great hall. And tonight the group will bed down at the lovely Tolftaholm Manor in Lagan. And this um, place has been around for more than 600 years. So you have Gustav Vasa, Wilhelm Moberg, and Bruno Matson are just a few of the guests that have enjoyed food and hospitality over the years here at Tofta Home. So we're pretty lucky to be um, being able to stay there. The next day we'll head to Costa Boda in the Kingdom of Crystal. This is a region of Sweden that contains 15 glassworks dating back to the 18th century. The glassworks have become part of the culture of Sweden, and examples can be found in many Swedish homes, which is recognizable by a small sticker at the bottom with the name. So we'll get to see a little bit about um, that history and tradition of glass blowing in this area of Sweden. Then we'll continue on to Gothenburg, where we'll stay for two nights. So we'll have a, a history, um, or we'll learn a little bit more about the history of the city on a sightseeing tour. And um, we're going to actually travel down the Dutch Inspire Canals on that tour. So afterward, um, everybody is kind of free to visit um, the Fish Church, or if they want to visit the Volvo Museum, or the Gothenburg Museum of Art. That's up to them. And then the next, we're going to travel through the Swedish countryside from Gothenburg to Stockholm. So along the way, our tour director will entertain the group with some music, maybe some language lessons, and um, some commentary. So we're going to arrive in Stockholm, where the tour will end on day 14. But before we go, we're going to visit the Vasa Ship Museum, the City Hall, and other places of interest on a half-day sightseeing tour. The Vasa Ship Museum is marvelous and definitely worth a visit um, anytime you're in Stockholm. So cap um, highlights of captivating Scandinavia, you'll get to visit three countries in one tour. Um, we're gonna, we include the overnight cruise from, Copenha from Oslo to Copenhagen. We're going to tour Fredericksburg Castle outside of Copenhagen. We'll have an overnight at a Swedish manor house. And then uh, in Stockholm, we're going to visit the City Hall and the Vasa Ship Museum. So this 14-day tour, the price is $56.95, which again includes air from Minneapolis-St. Paul. Now the last tour I want to talk about is Land of the Midnight Sun. Again, one of those unique destinations that not a lot of people um, either know about or um, uh, include on uh, tours. So this tour is going to take you north above the Arctic Circle in Norway into the land, of course, of the Midnight Sun. So this tour starts in Trondheim, and then we travel continuously north, and we're going to follow that Midnight Sun all the way up to Tromsø. And again, we're going to visit the Lofoten Islands, which are here, and we'll be above the Arctic Circle for about half of the tour. So again, we're going to start in Trondheim, where we'll spend two nights. And there you can see the lovely Nidros Cathedral. We'll get a close-up view uh, then on our tour on day three. And then the afternoon is free to visit the city independently. Now the next day, we're going to drive to Stiklestad, which is the site of the famous Battle of 1030. And this is the battle in which King Olaf was killed. So King Olaf, who became the patron state of Norway, was buried um, where, the, where the Nidros Cathedral now stands. And so this Stiklestad um, is where that battle took place. So the Stiklestad church now sits on the side of the battle. Stiklestad. And during the battle, St. Olaf received three severe wounds in the knee, in the neck, and the final mortal blow through the heart and he died leaning against a large stone. The church building is assumed to have been erected on the exact spot where St. Olaf was killed during that battle, and the stone is supposedly still inside the altar of the church. So one of the really interesting things about this church are the paintings on the inside. 
they're painted in the same way um, that the Mona Lisa is and that the eyes follow you as you move around the, the church. So it's, it's interesting and a little uh, frightening at the same time. Now the next day we're going to enjoy a drive along the coastal scenery of Hel Helgeland as we drive north to the Norwegian Aqua Center. And here we're going to learn about aquaculture in Norway, so fish farming. So it's a little, uh, something a little different. We're going to continue again north along the coast, and we're going to pass the Seven Sisters mountain range en route to Moirana, where we'll spend the night. And as you can see, the level road just follows the coastline. So day seven, we're going to travel actually north of the Arctic Circle, which is the boundary of the midnight sun of the Arctic summer and the sunless winters of the north. We'll visit the Arctic Circle Center before we continue to Salström in. Um, this is the site of the world's strongest maelstrom. So we'll actually get to see that up close and um, we're seeing at the hotel that's near there. Now day eight, this is, this is probably the number one highlight for most people on this tour is that we spend a whole day just touring the Lofoten Islands. Um, we're going to head to Bodo and we'll take a short flight and then um, head over to the islands. We'll have two days visiting various sites around the island, including the fishing village of Au, uh, Solver and Rhine, which was once selected as the most beautiful village in Norway. And this picture here, um, it's not hard to see why it's, it's named the most, picture, the most beautiful village. So we're going to depart the Lofoten Islands on day 10 and we will continue north to Narvik where we'll visit the World War II Museum and, and take an excursion by cable car. So here we go, we're going to go up the mountain and for a fantastic view. On day 11 we'll embark on the last portion of the journey north as we head to Tromsø. Before we arrive we'll stop to visit the North Norway Boat Museum and the Polar Park, which is the northernmost wildlife park in the world. So we can see some wolves and other wildlife from this area. And of course, Tromsø is famous. Um, it's known as Paris of the North, and it's famous for being a northern light hotspot. But we're going to arrive on Midsummer's Eve, so it'll be a little bit different than um, getting out in the middle of the winter looking for northern lights. During the last full day in Norway, we're going to have a sightseeing tour of Tromsø. And of course, one of the, the main features will be the Arctic Cathedral, which was built in 1965 and is inspired by Arctic nature. We'll visit the cathedral for a chance to see the return of Christ glass mosaic window, which dominates the interior. Then we'll continue to the Polar Museum, which tells the exciting journey of um, Arctic trapping and courageous polar expeditions. And then we'll have a farewell dinner before we depart the next day for home. So, of course, we're going to these very unique destinations that um, are hard to reach independently. Um, but the Lofoten Islands are probably the main attraction for this uh, for this tour. Having a full day there just to to tour and to see these spectacular places really um, really is what what makes this tour popular. So the, the price for this tour is $57.95 per person. Um, the land only is $47.95, which begins in Trondheim and ends in Tromsø. Now just to, um, to bring it back full circle, if you do have clients that would like to extend their journey or maybe leave um, a little early and do a little travel on their own before they join one of our tours, that's something that we are more than happy to help you with. Um, we have um, independent packages that are already created, or we can create a completely customized tour for your clients. And speaking of which, we do offer independent travel, um, for, and these include fjord tours, self-drive tours, adventure packages, and of course winter travel. Um, they can be found, all of our packages can be found online, but if you have something in mind for some clients or if they have something, um, they want to go to these unique destinations on their own, we can create a customized itinerary just for them. So I just wanted to uh, comment on some of our popular independent uh, travel requests. 
And the first one being Norway in a nutshell. And so I kind of wanted to explain that just in case um, some of you weren't familiar with what that is exactly. So the Norway in a nutshell is on this little map here. It's the, um, the train that goes from Myrdal. Now Myrdal can only be reached by train. So you either have to come from Vos or from, um, from this direction, from Oslo. So you take the Flom Railway. And then from Flom, you're going to cruise these two arms of the Songne Fjord. So this is the Songne Fjord, the long, longest, deepest fjord in Norway. This section here is the Ireland Fjord. And this is the Narrow Fjord, the Narrow Fjord. So you're going to cruise these two fjords to Gudvangen. And then we will take a bus down the Stalheim Road, which is a little zigzaggy line, all the way back to Vos. So that is the Norway in a nutshell, um, in a nutshell, I guess. So it's the bus, it's the cruise, it's the train. And so it gives you that really wonderful feeling of Norway. And, of, and you can do it in one day. So it's a very short time period. Again, uh, the Low Fulton Islands are also another popular request. Um, for those seeking just natural beauty, the, I mean, Low Fulton Islands is hard to beat. So um, you can enjoy 24 hours of daylight during the summer and, of course, the northern lights during the winter months. Now, if you have clients that enjoy a good adrenaline rush, they may want to check out the Extreme Games in Vos, which is here. So they have um, Extreme Games that they do every year. They might want to hike to Pulpit Rock, which is near Savanger board an icebreaker um, in the Gulf of Bothnia if they wanted to do that, um, sleep in a bed made of ice, and any number of other adventures that await in Scandinavia. So there's just a wide variety and usually we can find something that um, fits the bill. So if you have clients that want to visit just the Scandinavian capitals of Oslo, Copenhagen, and Stockholm um, and Helsinki, we do have a nine-day package that includes all of these cities and transportation between each. Um, we can also add extensions to Reykjavik, Iceland, um, and St. Petersburg, Russia, as well as the Bjork country of Norway. Now, Iceland has become a frequently requested destination in the past few years, and one of the best ways to see this country is to rent a car and just drive the ring road, which uh, circles the island. And this can be done in as little as nine days. And finally, the magical northern lights. So you can find those in Iceland, Norway, Finland, and Sweden during the winter months. And that's when you're going to have the most darkness. Um, and you're going to find those usually above the Arctic Circle. So we do have packages that are already made um, that people can just, just go in and purchase. But um, these, these packages have been planned. They've been um, tried and true. So it's, it's easy. Um, but if you do have clients that want something a little bit more or have a uh, special interest that they would like to, um, to take advantage of while they're in Scandinavia, that's when we would help you create a customized itinerary. And as I segue into the next thing, so customized travel, we can um, plan customized itineraries for individuals, families, groups, and organizations. So these are tailor-made based on your client's interests, um, their area of heritage, budget, length of stay, and so much more. We can include transportation, tours, activities, hotels, um, just kind of whatever they need. It's as little or as much as you need, basically. And then the last thing is cruises. So if you have clients that want to take the mail boat in Norway, chances are they're referring to Hertogruten, um, Norwegian Coast Voyage. And if you're unfamiliar with Hertogruten, our staff at Brecky Tours is also able to assist you with these travel arrangements. Um, we've worked with and, in, and all of us in the office have experienced Hertogruten firsthand. So we're happy to help you by providing advice, travel tips, and more. So the Hertzgruten's Norwegian Coastal Voyage is it's an easy way to explore the northern reaches of Norway. But they also do offer a variety of cruise itineraries to Spitsbergen, which is uh, Solvbard, which um, is north, it's in the north, um, northern reaches of Norway, um, Iceland and Greenland, Europe, Antarctica, and beyond. So just some scenes from around Hertzgruten. So we, we get a lot of clients that ask a lot of the same questions. And so I thought it would be nice to share some of that information 
with you guys so that if you do receive these questions from your clients, you have the answers and they are ready to go. So first off, what should I pack? And um, we always recommend to clients to bring clothing that you can layer. So casual clothing is the norm on our tours and, and if they're traveling independently, it's perfectly acceptable. Um, you might also want to bring a jacket and perhaps a raincoat. Other things that people may want to bring along include an umbrella or a poncho, since it does quite, rain quite a bit in Norway and Scandinavia. Um, snacks, medications, including over-the-counter medication like aspirin, um, sometimes those are really hard to find in Scandinavia. So we always recommend if you, you know, take if you like to take some aspirin every now and then, go ahead and bring it yourself. Um, sunscreen and a small day pack, um, so you can put sweaters and a water bottle, things like that. Um, always great things to pack. Um, additional costs. So again, we don't like to nickel and dime our clients while they're on tour or even when they're traveling independently. So we try to make as many um, pre-arranged arrangements as we can or prepaid arrangements as we can. So um, the on our tours, breakfast and most dinners are included. We don't typically include lunch, but if you eat a pretty good sized breakfast and then a decent dinner, you'll find that you really won't be needing much while traveling in Scandinavia. Um, another good bit of advice is to bring an empty water bottle. So the tap water in Scandinavia is perfectly safe to drink and you can save two to three dollars um, a bottle by just refilling it yourself um, before you leave the hotel. So. Uh, do people in Norway and Scandinavia speak English? And yes. So even if you don't speak a word of Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, whatever, you should not have a problem interacting with local people. And this one is one that we get a lot. When is a good time to travel to Scandinavia? And really the answer is any time, but it really depends on your clients. So if they prefer smaller crowds, um, being outdoors, or traveling on a budget, then perhaps the spring or the fall would be preferable. But if they enjoy winter activities or want to check, you know, seeing the northern lights off their bucket list, then obviously they would need to go during the winter. Um, most people prefer to travel when it's warmest, so June through August is the best bet. And then another good question, do I need a visa? Um, traveling in Scandinavia only requires a passport. If you do, if your clients do plan to extend their trip with a tour of Russia, they will need a visa. However, we can help in obtaining that. How hard is it to drive in Norway? We get this quite a bit. Um, luckily for us, Norwegians and all of Scandinavia drive on the same side of the road as we do, so that part is easy enough to handle. What we, what we Americans may find challenging is the size of the roads and the road signs. So as long as um, you do a little planning ahead and feel comfortable driving in a smaller space than what you normally would, then I tell my clients then you should be okay driving in Scandinavia. Another question that we get often is what are the physical requirements for our escorted tours? So during a typical day, we will have about two to three hours of walking, but it's broken up over the day. So at some stops, you may only have a five minute walk um, to get from say the bus to your hotel or bus to you know a restaurant or the, the site that we're, we're visiting. Um, whereas others, it may be 10 to 15 minutes. So if you have clients that have mobility issues, um, we, we always advise that you can choose not to take part. Um, so they, they do have that option. Otherwise, I would recommend calling our office just to discuss. And then um, how many people are on a tour? Typically, we have, um, it can vary, but um, we expect about 30 on our popular tours and about 20 to 25 of some of our more out of the way uh, tours, such as our um, Land of the Midnight Sun and Majestic. So um, we do only operate one bus though, so at the most um, your clients will only be traveling with 48 people on board. All right, and so to sum up, I just wanted to leave this up um, if we have any questions that are coming in. Um, just kind of a summary of our um, travel agency commission policy. And as well, if you are interested in experiencing Scandinavia for yourself, we do extend a 25% discount off the land only price to travel agents and a 15% discount off the land only price for a companion. 
So if it's something that you are interested in uh, experiencing for yourself, we invite you to join us on one of our tours and we would like to offer you a nice discount on that as well. So if we have any questions, it's a small group today, so um, we are recording. I know we had some people that weren't able to make it, um, but if there's any questions out there, I can go ahead and answer those. If not, we can wrap up. So again, I'll leave my contact information. I'll put that up just really quickly. And then I'll leave you looking out over the Ireland Fjord and Flum at one of the hotels that we like to stay at while we're there. This is the Fretline Hotel. So um, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We hope that uh, we can help you uh, with your clients interest in traveling to Scandinavia and showing them our little favorite corner of the world and introducing you to Brecky Tours and Scandinavia. Thank you so much everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon.